In this video, we're going to explain how to integrate a function using differential forms. And uh, the, w the process that we're going to describe is going to generalize to integrating more complicated um, differential forms, not just the, the functions, which are maybe the simplest type. So um, first, we're going to review the Riemann sum, some sort of method of integrating function f from r2 to r um, over a region r in the plane. And we're going to do this using the language of differential forms. So the first step is we choose a lattice of points. So we choose a bunch of x's, x coordinates, i equals 1 to n, and a bunch of y coordinates, j equals 1 to m, um, so that uh, well, we, we actually aren't necessarily considering all of the points um, x, j, x, i, comma, y, j, but we want to consider the pairs, the set of pairs x, i, y, j in R. So say I've chosen my lattice um, to look like like this, maybe, maybe I'll do a slightly finer lattice. I've chosen like, you know, to pick, pick these points. So my, maybe my uh, coordinate axes are here and here. And I've chosen to pick every, like my X, X I's are like zero, one, two, three, four, and five. So I guess I'll include that point. And then my Y J's are zero, one, and two. Then I should um, consider all these points. And then, you know, I'm not necessarily considering all of those. Maybe my region R looks something like, like that, but I'll consider um, all of these X's and uh, these pairs X, Y in my region. Okay. So um, then for each, each point, I'm gonna consider the two vectors. Um, the two vectors uh, v1 and v2. So at the point ij, I'm going to define the first vector to be to have sort of its x coordinate be the difference between um, the x values. And so I set a lattice. These don't have to be evenly spaced, right? I can, I mean, it's a deep theorem, um, but I, I could have picked them to be unevenly spaced. So um, this quantity I'm going to write down might depend on i, is what I'm saying. Um, and this is in the tangent space to x i y j. Um, and then v two i j um, is sort of the y difference y j plus one minus y j in the same tangent space. So here, maybe at this point, um, I'm this will be the vector in the tangent space to this point one one, um, the one pointing right. Um, whose length is the dif difference in x values is v1, and then the one pointing up is v2. Okay, so those are just the names of those vectors, and this should look familiar, so you should compare to sort of the change in x and change in y that you might have seen when learning about integrals in a calculus class. Okay, so then we're going to compute um, uh, well, so in your book, this is two steps, but basically what we're going to do is we're going to sum over I and sum over J F at the point X, I, Y, J of the, um, value of the volume form DX wedge DY on the pair V1, I, J, V2, I, J. So essentially this volume form is eating these two vectors and then spitting out, you know, so here I would be spitting out the, this area of this um, square, and then I'm adding, uh, I'm multiplying by the value that the function takes at that point. So um, if I had a more general example, so like instead of um, this sort of really regular example I drew, maybe I'll draw something a little bit like not as uh, nice. So say I, I chose my X's to be um, spaced like that, and then my y's, maybe the first um, 
one of my y's is one, but then one of them is one half. So say I, I have some spacing like this, for example. Um, and my region is gonna be like that region or something. Then what I'm doing is I'm just taking, um, so for this point here, I'll be computing the area of this square and then multiplying it by f at, at, at that point. So the contribution will be like f at this point times one half. Um, uh, the contribution maybe at this point here will be much larger because um, now I'm taking the area of this rectangle. So the contribution here will be f at this point times, I think, three. I'll use a little cross symbol. So depending on sort of how I've chosen my lattice, I'll get different sums. But the point is that, and the sort of theorem is that um, if I take the limit, and this is something that you, you'll learn in an analysis class, um, take the limit as m and n go to infinity, and um, this is defined, this is what the, um, what the integral of the function f over this region is. So this limit is how we define uh, the integral over the region R of f times the uh, two form or the volume form dx wedge dy. And um, what you might remember from multivariable calculus is this is just equal to the double integral over the region R of f times uh, f dx dy. So sort of computing this integral um, with the order of integration x first and then y. So, you know, we did all this work just to show that the integral of um, a function times the differential volume form dx wedge dy is just sort of what we would have hoped it would be. Uh, but the nice thing about this procedure is that we, um, is that it gives us the sort of much more general language to talk about integrals uh, in different situations. So um, one thing that we'll see in this video is how easy it is to talk about change of coordinates and sort of how much more easy, at least for me, it is to remember how to go through the whole change of coordinates procedure. And then in later videos, we'll um, talk about how this generalizes to integrating K forms and you know, sort of how much easier it is to integrate K forms um, using this um, sort of formulation than it is, uh, you know, remembering how to take dot products and cross products and things like that. And also generalizes to more dimensions. Okay, so one thing to be aware of, public service announcement. Um, so you might remember that changing the order of integration didn't do anything in multivariable calculus. So if I did, if I did this, I would get the same thing. This is not going to be true for integrating differential forms, right? Because dx wedge dy is equal to negative um, dy wedge dx. So if I were to just switch the order, I should actually have a minus sign. And this is this is important. So basically, in um, calculus and some analysis classes, you will see um, you will you will see this. It's called Fubini's theorem. Um, but because sort of you're in what we're interested in in those classes is the area under a function um, under the graph of a function. But here we we're very in in geometry we're very interested in signed areas. So it's important to remember um, to remember the sign. And so the way that you'll that you'll do that when you're integrating a function is just remember that if I'm integrating a function, I'm integrating f times the volume form dx wedge dy. And um, if, you know, through change of coordinates, as we'll explain next, or some other method, I end up switching the x and the y, I have to remember to also include the negative sign. Okay, so we're going to take a break and then discuss change of coordinates.